Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to another edition of the Mayor's Corner. We made it through the Arctic freeze from last week, and now temps are warming up, and I think it's going to be over 50 degrees here on Friday in Newburyport. So this is kind of like our Valentine's edition, right? Because uh, Valentine's Day is next Tuesday, so we won't have another Mayor's Corner until then. So I've got my red tie on. Uh, I was just up at the Senior Center doing some Valentine's bingo with a couple, uh, a couple of our great seniors here in the area. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but I hope, um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Valentine's Day, uh, whether you are a big fan or not. Um, but uh, you know, there's always lots going on. Uh, we're actually doing an Oregon donor event here at City Hall on Valentine's Day. So it's at City Hall. It's the New England Donor Services event. So if you want to come in to City Hall on Valentine's Day and sign up to be an organ donor, please come on down. Uh, it's, it's worth your time. So uh, we're excited to be partnering with that event. We actually have a little proclamation we're going to do for that day as well. Uh, what else is going on? Yesterday, I was lucky enough to go to the Bresnahan uh, Elementary School in the morning for the 100th day of school. And they make a big deal about the 100th day of school, particularly in the kindergarten grade. So they do a lot of projects. They have a 100th day project that they work on. And then a superhero shows up at the school called Zero the Hero. Now, they didn't have this when I was in school. I'm pretty bummed because they've, they've been doing it for a long time now. But Zero the Hero showed up on a fire truck and then he spends the day um, with the classes and the kindergarten classes going in, talking to the kids, uh, doing some little lessons around the 100th day of school, checks out their project. So it's a really fun event. I love seeing all my favorite kindergartners up front waiting. I got to hang out with them for a little bit. Hudson, if you're out there, it was great to see you. Um, Hudson Carter. But uh, it was a great day. So uh, again, thank you, Zero the Hero. Keep up the good work. And uh, again, thanks to the President Hand for inviting me. It was really fun to be a part of that day. So let's talk about what's going on in the city, all right? So now we're past the State of the Union and we're past all the, again, we had such a great response from, from that speech and you know, talking about what we did this past year and where we wanna go. So let's talk about now putting in some of these uh, plans into action, all right? So I did talk about the parks plan. Uh, we had our first uh, meeting of the parks reorganization plan at the Community Services Subcommittee yesterday. Uh, Kim Turner and myself, mostly Kim Turner, uh, presented the, uh, the plan and we really highlighted on uh, you know, what we kept in the plan from last time, but then, you know, what did we add to the plan, all right? So that was a big part of this, is what did we hear from the public, you know, going through this process back in August, and how did we incorporate some of those questions and uh, suggestions into the plan? And so we had a, a really great presentation last night. We had some wonderful feedback from counselors that are already, like, on board and just happy with the things that we've done. They appreciate all the work we've put into it, and we have. We put in a ton of work. It's been five months since that since i decided to pull the first iteration of the plan and uh, i think people really appreciated the work that we've put into it uh, we've done a lot of work specifically with the parks commission whose charter is to actually look over our parks so we're going to kind of get back to that a little bit which that you know that part that piece of it was taken away from the parks commission a little bit so that visioning piece is going to be brought back into the fold we talk a, a lot about uh, adult rec and you know again we don't even have adult rec here in the city we didn't before but now we, we see a real opportunity to bring that back into the fold uh, under this new parks reorg plan uh, we talked about the parks Por uh, port park alliance which is this new 501c3 that was formed by a really dedicated group of wonderful citizens uh, and how that's going to be like the volunteer and fundraising piece of the parks uh, and then we also talked about this, uh, you know, this 10-year vision that the Parks Commission just put together. And we talked about uh, a planner in our, our planning office uh, working with them to kind of put this into action over the next few years. So we really, I think we've checked off just about all the boxes. So uh, that was the first step, was uh, the subcommittee meeting last night. So next week on Wednesday, so this is uh, after Valentine's Day, so February 15th, we're going to have a public hearing. And it's going to be here at City Hall at 630. We had one of these before. Uh, what's nice about this one is um, Councilor McCauley is, is running this, this public hearing, so he's going to open it up and people are going to get a chance to speak. You can tell us if you like the plan. You can tell us, you know, you can make suggestions to the plan if you'd like. You know, we're really just there to listen. Um, there's no back and forth at this meeting. It's really just a, a, a meant to be a public hearing. And then we'll see if we do another hearing, possibly. If not, um, you know, we'll go back to community services and uh, the, we'll listen to their debate. And then hopefully it gets sent back to council for vote. And uh, we, hopefully we can, we can push on forward. Because, I mean, as we get into budget season, we really like to get this plan in place. Um, and so that, that will help us budget and that will help us make, you know, again, this is connected to other departments in the city, too. So it will help us move forward on a lot of fronts. 
So that was really exciting, and we're really excited about the plan, which again, at the end of the day, is gonna make our parks better. And just kudos to everyone, the Parks Department, DPS, uh, my office here, uh, especially Christine Jackson, who have, this past seven months, I don't think anyone in the city can say the parks has never run better, which, you know, and I think this plan is gonna help us do that. So uh, again, kudos to everyone involved. Uh, what else is going on? So the streets and sidewalks plan, we didn't get it into this packet, so there is a city council meeting on Monday the 13th, but we will get that submitted for the next packet. So last year, you know, was the first year we put together this five year streets and sidewalks plan. So it's a rolling plan, so we're gonna add another year each year. Uh, last year we worked on wards one, three, and five, and now we're working on wards two, four, and six. So we're gonna submit that plan into city council uh, for, them, for them to review. Uh, last year we did 23 streets. This year we don't, we're probably not gonna do as much, but we're actually gonna pave more. So last year we did just over four miles of paving. Uh, this year we're gonna do a little bit more than that. So not quite five, but still more than four miles of paving. And just now there'll just be fewer streets because they're just gonna be bigger streets this year. But some really important streets that we're gonna work on too. Plummer Ave, uh, Noble Street, uh, Middle Street, uh, State Street after they do the, um, the gas line uh, replacement. So a lot of heavy volume streets in town are gonna be touched this year, which is great. I think people are gonna notice that work happening all over the city. Never mind that you know we're still gonna have the Phillips Drive uh, neighborhood that's gonna be worked on, which I just ran into a resident at the senior center thanking me for getting uh, that project started because they were actually digging there today and getting that project going. So he, I mean, it, a lot of those neighbors have been waiting tw over 20 years for this project to start. So uh, we're, we're thrilled that that's going. So kudos to everyone involved for getting that project going. Uh, so that, that's, wh that's where we are with streets and sidewalks plans. So there'll be still opportunities to, to fill out p petitions if you feel like your street should be on there. Uh, we're actually gonna do target some sidewalks this year too as part of the plan. So all that information will be coming out soon, but we're really excited about uh, you know, what we're putting together for this year. I'll bring up the dredge just because it's, it seems to be in the paper every day, but we're still struggling to get that dredge started back up. Uh, you know, we're working with the Army Corps of Engineers. We had a great uh, Merrimack River Beach Alliance MRBA meeting last Friday, and uh, the Army Corps of Engineers was there, uh, gave us an update. They were hoping to start the dredge back up this week. It still hasn't happened yet. A lot of this is weather dependent. Uh, but they're running out of time, right? So they have till the end of March, according to their contract, to get this, get this uh, dredge started back up and finished. So they're already talking about possibly uh, a two-week extension to get us into April a little bit, but even, you know, even that, we're limited, right? There's not much further we can go past those two weeks. So they are telling us they need about 20 to 21 days of, of dredging to finish this project, and it really should be straight dredging. And, and, and which is gonna be difficult with the weather. So we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. We're staying in, in constant contact with the Army Corps and the Army Corps is you know, keeping the pressure on H&L uh, contractors to get this job done. So again, we'll keep, keep sending you updates, but it should be starting back up. It looks like we have a good stretch with no weather here coming up. Uh, so hopefully they can get that work going and you're gonna see that big dredge throwing. Uh, again, 90% of the sta sand uh, is still uh, needed to get back on that beach. So we'll keep you posted on the dredge, but we're hopefully gonna be moving forward here pretty soon. Another thing I was thrilled about, I don't know if everyone just got their electric bill, but I know we did, and we had a, uh, over $100 savings from the previous uh, electric bill. So again, that was due to the uh, aggregation program that we were able to put in effect. And again, that's called the Community Choice Power Supply Program. Uh, so just kudos again to our Sustainability and Energy Director, Molly Attenborough, and the uh, EAC, which is the Ener Energy Advisory Council. Uh, we're making a considerable savings in the winter. It's still expensive. I absolutely uh, agree with that. Um, but, you know, if, if we didn't do this, we'd be paying so much more. So, and I think it was actually not good, but we saw what that first bill looked like uh, after National Grid changed the rates, and then you got to see what the what the aggregation program did for the savings. So we're gonna continue, we know this is gonna be a difficult year, so we're gonna continue to look for ways to help residents save. Uh, and again, this was just one of those things that we were able to do this year. So I hope uh, everyone uh, got their electric bills and said, oh my goodness, thank, thank you for, for getting this. So again, kudos to Molly, Molly Ettenborough and the EAC. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is, is New Report Youth Services. So we did have another meeting um, through the Budget and Finance Committee since our uh, last, uh, uh, Mayor's Corner. And so in these budget and finance meetings, they're talking about certain topics around New Report Youth Services. So the first one, they talked about the programming. We had a wonderful presentation by our, our director, uh, Andy Egmont, talked about the programming of NYS. So this last meeting was more about the site itself. And 
again, we've been talking about this site now for two years. So we brought in all the experts that we've brought in to, to look at the site. And again, we've checked off all the boxes. Uh, city Council still have some questions. Um, so you know, we, we, we went there and we tried to answer them. Uh, so I, you know, I, I think we did a great job. Um, I think they still have some, qu some questions, so we'll, you know, we'll keep working to get them the answers. But um, from all accounts, from all the experts that we've sent in to, to examine the site, uh, that this site is, 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 is a viable site for New Report Youth Services. So we're gonna continue to move forward. And one of the ways we're gonna move forward is we're, you know, we've put in this order to use the Kelly School funds that we have an account from the sale of the Kelly School that was specifically to be used for New Report Youth Services. So we've asked to use some of that money, which is about, I think there's about 600,000 plus left in that account, uh, use some of that money to go towards the design of uh, NYS at 59 Low Street. As you know, we submitted a few months back now, we submitted three different plans, uh, three different price points for New Report Youth Services, but that was only uh, you know, less than 10% of the design. That was actually less than 5%. So we would like to move forward with 100% of the design. So we, we've asked for $200,000 of that money and then we can, we can see where we are and then make another request uh, to city council for funding once we have a better idea of it. And I think this all really came about by looking to see what happened with the, with the West End Fire Station. You know, back in October 2021, they, you know, the city council approved a certain bond amount for that fire station. And then I just had to go back to them months later because costs have escalated and we had to ask for another 3.3 .3 million. So my feeling is I want to keep moving this project forward. I don't want to lose any time. You know, again, I, I appreciate the, the process that we're going through and talking about, uh, you know, this, this plan that we have for 59 Low Street, but I don't want to lose time either. So I'm asking city council to get behind putting this $200,000 over to design. We'd have to go out uh, through a bid process to, to, and we take the, you know, the lowest bidder for, for the design. But I just feel like that moves us forward, right? And we're gonna know a lot more about the site and what, we're, what, we're, what we can do there after we get through a full design. And then we can make a really uh, strong ask of city, uh, city council to get behind that. Uh, <clears throat> I will say that there is a, uh, one of the councilors made an amendment uh, to limit the scope to only a $2 million project there. Uh, and if you remember, the, the, out of the three projects, the, the least one we had, which really didn't meet the needs of, of youth services was three, like a little over three million. So I'm gonna ask the council to, to hopefully uh, vote to not include that amendment on what we're asking for. I mean, let us, let us go do the design and, and have us, give us a couple of options to move forward, but let's not, not pigeonhole us into a, a $2 million project when we don't even think that that's viable at, the, at there. So um, we'll talk about that more on Monday, but if, you're, if you care about this project, I ask you to come out to city council on Monday. Uh, that's February 13th. The meeting starts at seven o'clock. But come and just tell us what you think. If you think it's, it's too much money to spend for youth services, let us know. If you think like this is long overdue and you care about the kids in your report and uh, you know, this, this building checks off a lot of your boxes about what, like, what kind of community you'd like to live in and what we're, we're valuing as a community, come, come, come talk to us about it because I think, I think they need to hear from people. Uh, I think this is important. It's my number one priority this year and I'm looking forward to moving this, this forward. So this is the next step, is getting the money to forward this design. So I, I hope I see you all on Monday night. All right, that's it about business. What else is going on real quick? So I, I just wanted to give a shout out to Community Service of Newburyport. They've been, in, they've been in business for over 100 years, doing a lot of great things uh, around town. Uh, really, just really un, unsung group. On Saturday, February 11th, from 11 to 1 p.m., they're doing a Super Bowl clean, uh, drop off. So they're looking for dish soap and sponges, liquid hand soap, and paper towels. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but all these things are, are things that some, some people in our community struggle to get. So they do a lot of these community drives, so I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. And I just want to mention one more time, the Heart to Heart, Newbyport remembers uh, Uvalde families. Three different opportunities to be a part of this community art project, and all the hearts that are made and collected are going to get sent down to uh, Uvalde, which is pretty neat. Uh, but lots going on for Valentine's Day. Love is in the air here in Newbyport. So again, I hope you all have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Enjoy the weekend. We've got some good weather, so if you can get out there and ski in this nice weather while you can, or just get outside, please do it. Uh, <clears throat> again, I think we're, we're, we've got a lot of great things going on in Newbyport, and I'm looking forward to move the, moving these things along as we get into spring. So that's our Mayor's Corner this week. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you all next time on the Mayor's Corner.